Joining us right now, GOP political strategist, it's Matt Mikoviak. Matt, good morning. How are you? Morning, Chad. I'm doing great. How about you? Doing great. Thanks for uh, coming on the show today. Uh, a lot to get into uh, this week in D.C., but I want to start off with the big news, I guess, in the uh, Senate race for 2018. Uh, Senator Cruz has a at least one Democratic opponent right now. And uh, the, the funny thing about this, Matt, is that Politico uh, came out with a story and a, and a few others did that said that this is the uh, the great hope for uh, for Democrats to win back the Senate is uh, betting on Beto O'Rourke to uh, defeat Ted Cruz. And I don't think that's a great proposition. Do you? No, I don't either. Um, you know, I really am just perplexed as to why, um, you know, kind of a very under-the-radar congressman from El Paso who's in his third term in the U.S. House, uh, believes that Ted Cruz is vulnerable enough that he would be willing to sacrifice a safe congressional seat, <clears throat> that he could stay in for, for a very long time. So, <clears throat> um, you know, it, it's possible that Beto work is looking at this and thinking, well, we're going to be in the minority for a while. Um, the House is very hard to accomplish much in the minority. He may just be fed up. So that, that could be part of what's happening. But I, I just have a really difficult time seeing how anyone can objectively uh, conclude that, that Cruz is in any way vulnerable. Um, I just don't see it. And, and, and how O'Rourke is going to go out and raise 10 or $20 million when you have $2,700 limits I just don't see it. I mean, this this thing seems to me like it's a little bit of a vanity exercise. Um, he's running in the wrong state, I think, um, if he really wants to be a United States senator. Well, and what? He came out last week and said it's not going to be a traditional campaign. He's not going to have pollsters or consultants. And, uh, I, you know, it seems to me he wants to run a Trump-esque campaign without having the name ID or the flair of Donald Trump. Is that is that what he's trying to do? I guess, um, <laughs> you know, I, I think he's actually, you know, uh, probably fairly liberal uh, in terms of his views. Yeah. Um, and so it could be it's less about sort of a Trump-style campaign and more of a sort of grassroots Bernie Sanders-style campaign. Um, you know, I actually did see that he got some decent crowds, some of kickoff events around the state. And so that, that is, you know, one piece of data we can look at. But you know, look, I mean, statewide television in Texas at saturation level costs $1.8 million a week. Um, he said on Twitter this weekend that, that uh, the average donation he's received uh, since he announced he was going to run was $34. I did some quick math. I mean, that's 53,000 donations of $34 each just to do one week's worth of television. Uh, you know, he probably has 2 or 3% statewide name identification. You know, he would need to be above 50% to even be credible. Um, I, I just don't see a path there. Um, I understand Cru Ted Cruz will be a boogeyman to a lot of liberals and Democrats, but I just don't see a path to how he makes this race competitive. He starts with a very low profile, very little money. He's running from El Paso, which is just not, not really a population center uh, in our state, not a large media market. Again, I just you know maybe he wants to do this because he really wants to take on Cruz, but I, I just don't I just don't understand it. Do you think Joaquin Castro? Uh, he's been another Democrat who's been mentioned to get in, but he's actually built up somewhat of a profile uh, in, in Congress. Do you think that he's going to abandon that to run against Ted Cruz? I don't. I think he's used this entire you know due diligence phase, this exploratory phase, to try to raise money and collect email addresses and get around the state. Um, I'd be really stunned if he chose to do that. Uh, he is on the House Intelligence Committee, which is obviously very much in the middle of all this U.S.-Russia stuff. Um, he, he's also in a very safe seat, but he's also in a much more appealing seat in San Antonio with a larger um, media market and a larger donor base. And he's been more of a national figure than Beto O'Rourke has been. So I'll be really surprised if he gives up a safe congressional seat uh, at the end of the day. I just think this is not the year uh, for for Democrats to believe that they're going to win a major statewide office yeah. in Texas. There's just no evidence to um, to, to, to lead you to that conclusion. Uh, let's take a look at what's going on in D.C. this week. We, we've talked about Neil Gorsuch, and, and who knows what this is going to come down to. It looks like Democrats are going to try their best to filibuster, and, and Republicans will use the nuclear option. Uh, if, it, is, there, is there anything to – I mean, is there any – I guess fallout on the Republican side 
if they go nuclear option? I mean, is is there anything that voters will hold against Republicans if they go and use the nuclear option? Not that I can see. I mean, I think one scenario would be if, you know, they use the nuclear option, they confirm Gorsuch, uh, Trump loses re-election, and in that in, in the time between now and then, no other Supreme Court nominee either dies or retires. And then that would allow the next Democratic president to get a, a 51 vote threshold to confirm whoever they want, whatever hardcore liberal they want. Now, that, that to me is one potential worst case scenario. That's, that's pretty far off. I mean, that, that presumes Anthony Kennedy and Ruth Bader Ginsburg, um, don't die or retire in that intervening period. They're both, I think, in their late 70s, early 80s. So I, I just, to me, that the, the risk is all for the Democrats. If they do this, and that's gone. I mean, and, and Kennedy or Ginsburg or someone else dies or retires, there is absolutely nothing preventing Trump from putting almost anyone he wants uh, on the Supreme Court. Uh, and I think that, that that is a risk Democrats are really, I think, uh, undervaluing at this point. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Uh, Health care. Uh, I, I had Congressman Arrington on last week. Uh, and he was again on KFYO earlier this morning, and uh, it, it sounds like Republicans, you know, want to press ahead with a a second uh, attempt at repealing Obamacare. So there, there have been some rumors that that could happen this week, maybe next week. Uh, wh- what are your thoughts on on Republicans trying again? I mean, how many con- how many times can they try and not get something through? A piece of this that, that's a little bit unclear to me, and this is maybe uh, my fault since I did spend four years on Capitol Hill, but there is a deadline by which you cannot you cannot continue to, to use reconciliation as a legislative procedure. And I just don't know when that deadline hits. I'd always thought it was April 1st, um, but it may be a little bit of a, of a moving target. Now, if they're going to try to repeal and replace Obamacare uh, without um, – uh, reconciliation, you know, that to me is a show vote. That's not something that's going to happen. You're not going to get 60 votes in the Senate. You can't even get 60 votes in the Senate for Neil Gorsuch, and there are no no, no solid arguments against him. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I don't disagree. There, there clearly are some efforts right now going on. Um, what's interesting is that the Freedom Caucus appears more willing to negotiate right now than the, the moderates in the House do. The moderates in the House uh, are still kind of mad at the Freedom Caucus and are refusing to even meet. So, that to me is going to be the question is can they find some type of bill that the White House, the Freedom Caucus, and, and, a, and a large share of the moderates in the House can all agree to? Yeah, I, I, Republican voters want something done. And, and, and to me, that um, you have some of the, 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 the moderates who are uh, there in the House that are refusing to meet now with the Freedom Caucus. And, and early on, you had the House leadership that said, this is the bill, this is the way we want it. Everyone needs to get something done. Otherwise, it's it's going to be really bad, I think, for Republicans come 2018 and especially 2020, don't you think? Yeah, I think it, it can. And, and listen, there's nothing that prevents them from using reconciliation next year uh, to try to you know, replace the model care. Um, so I think that's also a possibility here is that they may just try to do it the following year. But mm-hmm. but sure, I mean, that was something they promised. And the fact that they haven't even had a vote yet, we're already – what are we, 70, 75 days into the Trump presidency? I mean, that's, that, that is something they have to address, and they have to do it uh, as quick as they can. But there's no advantage to, to, to holding a vote that won't pass. All that does is make a number of uh, members take a tough vote for no real benefit, and it shows the, the White House and the uh, Capitol Hill Republicans to be fairly weak, and I think that's not good for Trump's agenda either. Visiting with Matt Makoviak. Matt, uh, what are you going to be working on this week that uh, people may, need to be on the lookout for as far as your podcast and uh, columns and everything else that you have going on? Yeah, sure. Matt, the Mac on Politics, National Politics Podcast, that's produced with the Washington Times. The latest episode is Tom Nichols, Naval War College professor. It's all about Russia. It's a fairly deep dive into Russia uh, with, that, with an expert. Um, I have my weekly Washington Times column that's published every Thursday, so you can keep an eye out for that. Uh, but then uh, we also have our Must Read Texas morning email, which has the, the top news from around the state, which we send out every weekday. You can sign up for that at mustreadtexas.com. All right. As always, Matt, appreciate your time, and we'll visit with you next week. Take care.